class. Thank you, Keisha. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. We are the Crafty Lumberjacks. We had some technical difficulties, so thank you for being patient uh, while we try to get started here. Uh, we are coming to you live from Astoria, Queens, New York. And today we are making these beautiful, easy paper poinsettias or poinsettias. However you say them, they are beautiful and really easy to make. And what we love about this craft is how versatile they are. You can make them into a beautiful little arrangement like this. Or we have it as a present here with a little present topper. We've also made uh, wreaths with these. We've also put them in our garlands. We put them in our trees. Uh, we've been doing the paper point setters for like seven years now. I love this craft because they also save really well unless your cat sits on them like ours recently did now these are all a little crushed however they really do save really well we put them in a box and like dennis says then we stick them in our trees our wreaths our garlands they really are just so versatile and they are really beautiful yes and this way they can you can keep them year after year mm -hmm. uh it's quite controversial some people say that poinsettias are um toxic mm -hmm. and then others say that they're not oh. uh but you know Always safety first. So and what's great about these is they can last for years and years and years and years. Of course, special shout out to Fiskars for having us and Michaels for having us. We are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of today's class. So you'll want to stick around for that. The giveaway is only open to people joining us live now, currently on this class, not in the future. Yes. We'll ask a trivia question at the end of the class. And then we ask you to send us your answers to be entered into the giveaway. We see a lot of familiar faces here. So thank you all for being here. Um, I guess we should dive in. Yeah, let's get to it, shall we? Sure. Okay, well, you know, the thing about poinsettias are actually, even the flower part of the poinsettia is considered a leaf. Yes, the, the, the actual leaf, the green part and the red part is considered a leaf. And then the, the center part is considered uh, the flower. Yes, which I found really interesting and it's actually kind of confusing when we start talking about it. So if I call this <laughs> the flower, we do mean the red part more than the bells, you know? Yes, My yeah. brain just like after years and years of just thinking everything that's a flat that looks like a flower is a flower. You right, know? right. Um, and Felicia, I guess we can go to our top down. And we're actually going to be starting with the green leaves just because we're going to add a little bit of glue to them. And it's just a little easier uh, to let them dry. So Dennis, I'm going to have you um, sure take over the camera. Um, and the thing about poinsettias are there's thousands of different types of poinsettias. So the shapes of the leaves are all different. Um, but for the green leaves, I chose almost like a holly leaf. You're really only going to see the tips of the tips of these. So you don't have to focus too much on getting the shape perfectly right. And we're going to take a piece of paper and we're just going to fold it in half. Or actually, I'm not going to fold it in half. I'm going to fold it leaving probably about I don't know, I would say that's about two inches, maybe two and a half inches. And I'm just gonna crease it. You know what, you know what I forgot? My bone folder, but you can just take your finger and you can just do it like that. It wasn't even in the list today. I just thought, hmm. Yeah, I can run and grab it if you'd like. No, that's okay. Okay. And then I'm just going to trim off um, this extra part right here. And then I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to draw just a little bit of holly. You can freehand this or you can um, draw it like I am. So I like to start, I'm starting at the tip. Let me just move this camera so people can actually, because my hand's covering it a little. I like to start at um, the tip of the leaf and then I like to swoop down. We're going to say swoop a lot. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you're going to hear a lot of swooping today. And then, you know what? Swoop, there it is. There it is. And then I like to just do almost like another little indent. I know this is a little hard to see. And then I bring it down like that. So it's basically like a little holly leaf. And since I am have all this extra space up here, why not just do it again? I think for each um, stem, you could do two or one petal You or like leaf, but you really don't even have to have any green leaves if you don't want to. This adult pencil gives me the heebie-jeebies like no other. Huh, I didn't know that about you. You did not. It? <laughs> and Andrew is taking his time with this pencil. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna give my little tip. I'm gonna do my little tip of saying, um, when you're cutting out a curved area, instead of turning the scissor, turn like, 
turn the paper. So I'm taking my, my fingers here and I'm kind of manipulating the paper to move more than I'm manipulating the actual pair of scissors. That just helps me get a nice smooth line. I think I can just use a pen. Yes, I think you can use a pen. And there we go. And then I'm gonna do this again. And uh, typically I'm on the chat, but because we had technical difficulties, I had to get off of the other computer. So I will try to stay on the chat on the main thing here, but if I miss anything, just keep asking and I'll see if um, we can get to it. You see, these don't even really look the same, but again, you're not gonna notice that as much as you think you might. So freehand is always an easy way to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some green floral wire. Now use whatever you have at home. You don't need to go out and run and get a green floral wire if you don't green. If you have gold or silver, that works just fine. And I'm gonna take these wire cutters. I actually love these wire cutters. This is our first year having these. And what I love is they're spring loaded. So when you're cutting, we were doing our Halloween tree this year and we were cutting a lot of florals and it just, it's really nice. It, it feels like it's easy on your hands. They don't cramp up. Yes, and this is one of the Fiskars products that we are giving away today. That's right. So I'm gonna cut off about, I don't know, six or seven inches of floral wire. And I see Felicia's reminding you all, um, yes, this video will be recorded and it'll be shared on Michael's YouTube channel. Um, and also anytime we you make these projects or if you wanna share any projects, you should use the hashtag make it with Michaels. Uh, tag us, Crafty Lumberjacks, or even tag Fiskars. This way we get to see all your projects. And then I'm going to take, since I did use a pencil, I'm going to take the pencil side down because you're never going to see the bottom of these leaves. And I'm going to lay the floral wire about halfway. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue. It's a little dark. I'm going to add a little line of glue. And I'm going to place the floral wire on top. And actually what I found that's really helpful is I'm going to take a little bit of this floral tape and I'm just going to, oops, I actually should just use a pair of scissors for that. I'm going to cut off a little piece and I'm going to lay it right on top. And that's just going to help secure everything in. Now, if you've worked with floral tape before, we're going to talk about it in a little bit. It's not sticky. It's almost waxy. So it's just really going to help just like uh, press the glue in and it'll just stay. And there we go. So I'm going to set that to dry. If you are making these, you should probably add the wire to the next one. Do you want me to just do that quickly? Yeah. So there is no pattern. No, there's no pattern. Where our, it's just freehand. I like that about this project because everything we're going to cut today is very simple. If you're feeling like this shape is too hard, do a almost a like backwards a, three. Oh yeah. I was also <laughs> going to say, just do a, um, do like an oval or just a simple leaf shape, you know, like, um, an almond shape. And when you fold it in half, you're, I feel like I'm always surprised with how great it ends up looking. I can't find it. Oh, it's right in front of me. And, you know, a lot of our craft projects, we like to upcycle a lot. We like to make stuff from hand. Of course, we have laser cutters and cutting machines, but there's something so um, nostalgic about kind of just using what you have in your own home to make, you know, something magical. And uh, for our, our leaves of our poinsettias, the red leaves, we're going to be using bowls to kind of trace out our shapes. And you know what, I find something too, it's even though we do have a lot of tech, which we do find a lot, it's, it's really fun to do. There's something, even if it takes twice as long, there's something more relaxing about just using your hands, I feel, than relying on tech. This might be because we had technical difficulties today. Uh, just okay, even getting here. amen. But, um, you know, I do find it just a little bit more relaxing. We do think if you have like a wide variety of different colors, different shades of the same color. So Michaels has these fabulous paper packs that you can get. Uh, this is the red pack here. It has a lot of different shades of red and that kind of just adds a little bit more dynamic and life to each of your projects. Um, so same thing with the, the green leaves. Like we're, we're gonna be using different shades of different green. Uh, but so we're gonna be making a large uh, poinsettia flower or actually a leaf, but, and then a smaller one. And I'm just using a bowl to trace out my shape. So I'm gonna start with two different pieces of paper and two different size bowls. 
and I'm just going to trace the bowls, not with the dull pencil, because it's too much for my... Someone's particular. Yes. So I'm just going to trace it. So this is my smaller leaf here. And I'm going to do a darker one for my larger leaf. I also really like what I like about this project, too, is that it's really versatile. If you are really into pink or white for your Christmas, there are so many different shades of poinsettias that if you really can you tilt this create down them on the table a little in any shade you want that will match your decor. All right. So now I'm just going to do my best to cut these out. And like Andrew said, you want to follow. And again, you don't have to be too perfect here. Really, every flower will have its own little life and little story, uh, which I love. And, you know, it's kind of that thing like where you're making it and you're kind of like, how is this going to come together? How is it going to look? Ooh, this one petal is crooked or I cut or, you know, like when you have all of them together, it's really forgiving and it looks really magical and really festive. I also think when you look at actual poinsettias, they are very organic looking. The uh, you know a lot of the petals look different; they're kind of facing different directions. So I feel like this works out really well. How is everybody doing? Are you all decorated and ready to go? Are you still shopping? Are you still decorating? Where are you at in your holiday process? We were actually just talking with Felicia and saying we have not started <laughs> any present any shopping. holiday shopping. But, you know, I think as I get older and stuff, it's like the presents are my least favorite part of the holidays. Literally, I'm someone I'm I'm a giver. I don't like to get presents. I always feel so awkward, um, like people watching me open something and I'm like, oh, cool. And I mean, I always love anything because I'm a mush, but I'm I'm just like, I don't like doing that. Yeah. All right. So we have our two circles cut. I'm home doing a lot of Christmas shopping, still decorating and shopping. Oh no, <laughs> you'll get it done. You'll get it done. There is an, a light at the tunnel. <laughs> okay, so now we have our circle here. We are going to lights go up when the time goes back, brighten the evening so nicely. Oh, yes, I love, I love that. that. Okay, so we're gonna start to fold. It's all about that fold, baby. We're gonna fold it like a taco. And then we're gonna fold it in half again. We're almost kind of doing like a snowflake. And really this, we just do this fold to help us guide where we're gonna cut. And then, so I'm gonna fold it one more time, like a little snow cone sleeve. You're talking a lot about food and I'm hungry. <laughs> you have no idea, I'm starving. Aw, Tina, I wish you a speedy recovery. All right, oh, so now too, you Tina. see we have our little, uh, it almost looks like a, a wheel of a bicycle, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut down our folds, not all the way to the center. You want to leave about an inch in the center. So you see that I only cut there and then there's a half inch there and there'll be a half inch on the other side. So you want to leave a half inch to the center. There you go. And we're gonna do that all around our petals here. I also wanna say, I love these scissors. Oh they gosh, are just like these. the classic Fiskar scissors, but look how sparkly and green they are. If you're like us and when you're uh, decorating or wrapping presents or crafting for the holidays, I feel like I wanna be immersed. I wanna have the Christmas music on. I wanna have the Christmas movie on. I wanna have a candle lit and I want my scissors to be festive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and actually these scissors will be a part of today's giveaway as well. Yes. And you know what I love about these scissors too? They are gonna be fabulous in March. Yes, yes. Yeah, you you know. know, you've heard of Oprah's favorite things, but these are the crafty lumberjacks' yes. favorite things. Okay, so now we have all our little things cut. You can almost kind of see the shape of the flowers starting to, sorry, the shape of the leaves uh, kind of taking shape. So now I like to fold it back in like that, like a little fan. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the swoop technique again. So we're going to take our se center of our petal here. And I'm just gonna cut down and swoop it just like that. Did you see that? 
So find the center of one petal and you're just gonna cut it down and give a little swoop and cut it down. Okay, if I'm going, I'm gonna do it on the smaller one. So if you're a little confused, you can follow on the next one as well if you're crafting along with us. So you just wanna swoop, there it is. Can you see this? This is the weirdest angle. And see, so that's not perfect there, but you know what? It's gonna be okay. So you wanna find the center. Center. Yep, of each little uh, leaf pizza petal. pie. They almost look like little like pizza pie or like pizza slices. You see it, you see it? How y'all doing? And our last one here. And again, like I said, you don't have to be too perfect. Every little petal can be different. And then you see it's already taking shape. I mean, how freaking cute is that? That is really cute. Now, you know, we like to kind of keep pushing your buttons and make, thingy, make things even more confusing to you because we can't use our words and don't well, know how to explain things. Can we do that same thing again and then go to the next step or you want to? Uh, let me just finish this, yes. Okay. So now just for like a little extra space between each petal, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut down just a little wedge out of each side into the centerpiece. You see like a little triangle there. That just makes it feel like each uh, leaf is their own leaf, not cut out of a circle. Yeah, it really kind of does trick the eye. Where it's like, and oh, again, yeah. it's you don't have to be perfect. No. You just want to cut a little wedge, just give it a little more space in between each little folded uh, piece there. You know, next year we're doing the classes, hopefully, and um, we're gonna work on how we explain things. <laughs> Because words are hard when, because Andrew and I just kind of uh, freestyle. We're like, oh, let's cut it there. We never think about like actually teaching and how we should be like clearly explaining how to do that. So, you know, you're going to want to come back next year because we are going to be. What are we going to be? Oh, God. I don't <laughs> even know. Oh, my God. Even have the words this is going that. horribly. <laughs> Aw, thank you. I think you always have been crystal clear. Oh. All right. So once you make it your way around, you see. I mean, this almost looks like a snowflake. How cute is that? I leave I love how each petal has its own unique look. I agree. I think it is just so charming. And then for the next step, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold in the center leaf so you find the 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 tip the of your yeah the point of your petal there and i'm just going to use my nail you can use your bone folder or a pencil and i'm just going to pinch and crease because that's going to give it a little more um structure and uh dimension dimension so it kind of really makes it look um more realistic you know it's all these little details i missed a little wedge here oh no no that's no i didn't it's all these little details that kind of take it to the next level that makes it look more realistic. Um, yeah, because if you didn't do that, then it would be flat. <clears throat> you know, so why not just give it a little pinch? Excuse me. How is everybody doing? You all following along? You kind of get it. We've done a lot of paper flowers this year, and it's been quite controversial. <laughs> yes, your fingers are the bone folders. Yes. yes. I actually, I love the bone folder. I don't know if it would work for this step specifically. Because I feel like it's, it's just like a little of, pinch. Like kind of yeah. hold it in your hands and really kind of manipulate it. We have done a lot of, I think this is our third paper flower we've done this year. And I have to say, I mean, who doesn't like a paper flower? I, I love a paper flower. They really are so versatile. Look that how looks cute. And I mean, like, cute. it's not perfect. I have little crazy doohickeys here and a little swoosh that's missing. I cut a little too deep there, but really you cannot tell. You never be and again, to tell. this is the, the larger piece. So then I'm going to move on to the smaller piece here and I'm going to do the same thing. Yes. So if you had a hard time following along, we're going to do it all. You're going to have a hard time following along again. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it, you do a taco, you're just folding it. And again, these folds are just to use as a guide, if you think you can freestyle it and just cut, 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 that's fine. So I do one other fold like that and then another fold over like a little snow cone. So what is that, four folds? Four folds or three four folds. folds. Wait, which one? 
What? Three folds or four folds? One, two, three. All yeah. right. Okay, so we got our little bicycle wheel here with our spokes, and we're gonna cut down, leaving about an inch in the center. So you want a half inch on both sides. So leaving about a half inch to the center. And you know, you can keep it folded like a taco or how we just found for whatever reason, whenever we were doing that, it wasn't really um, it wasn't lining, up, lining up correctly. So we kind of open it up and then refold. But you know, all of these projects are just to inspire you and hopefully, you know, you kind of find your own way navigating through. And that's Absolutely. also fun for us to see. Like a lot of people will come to us in our DMs and say, oh, I did it this way. And we're always like, Oh my God. You're a genius. Why yes. didn't you tell us this earlier? We're like I added twine to this. I'm like, oh my gosh, that adds so much nice texture. Oh, okay, so you're, you're going to do the fold? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I always fold and do double swoop. Just because it saves a little time. You know, because if you are Santa's elf cranking these out, you got to get these done before Christmas, you know? So you got to cut corners where you can. These would also make a really nice... um you could make them on the smaller side and you could even keep them a little flatter and it would be great for a holiday card. Cute. I mean, hello. So cute. I always love like the mini ones. And then I'm going to do my wedges on the side here. Just a little. We'll do you good. Yeah, just, just a, a little wedge. Of space. You don't have to go all the way down to your no. uh, original cut. I actually think you should go down like halfway to your original cut. There you go. I just love this. It's... You know, Andrew and I had the opportunity and privilege to help decorate the White House this year for the holidays. And it was so magical. But when we first walked in there, we were like, how is this going to happen? And all of a sudden, as the days went on, you really see it start to come together. You're kind of like, this is not going to look like anything. Right. And then it really. And does. then all of a sudden you're like, holy moly. I, I You know, something that really uh, surprised me was how much. Um how much DIY there was. There were so many aspects of DIY, so many paper DIY All throughout paper the whole White year. House. All you know, the budget isn't huge. You would think they would have this huge budget, but the budget isn't very big. Um, so it really relies on volunteers making a lot of the uh, elements and a lot of paper crafts were made and they were just absolutely stunning. Um, it was very inspiring. Yeah, we actually got a lot of inspiration there. Uh, and we'll be sharing some DIYs on our uh, channels over the next couple of days. You know, if you want to replicate some of the ideas that were in, seen in the White House this year. And you know what? They use Fiskar's scissors in oh the White gosh. House. You know what? That's so funny. <laughs> Tiffany, we wanted to take a picture, but you can't bring your phones into the White House. Yes, while you're but I was like, there's <laughs> Fiskar's everywhere. Oh my gosh. I was so excited. Well, I mean, they're the best. Well, of course. All right, so we did it. We have our two flowers, petals cut. Oh my gosh. So there I you go. this already. I mean, that looks so cute. And I guess you can even add a third. This is kind of similar. We did the um, sunflowers, yes. which I know some of you were here for. So it's very similar. So you can add multiple layers or whatever you, you know, as many as you'd like or many different colors. All right, so now, should I keep going or you want to be? Um, no, you can, you want to do the bells? Yeah, I'll do the bells. Okay. Okay. So now for the flower part, we're using these middle uh, mini bells that we got at Michael's, of course. And we like things in like odd numbers. Typically when we're doing like crafts, we like to think of like threes or fives. Um, obviously the flower we're doing is two, but where's the wire cutter? Oh, okay. So I'm going to be using the gold uh, wire here. And I like about what I like about this project too is if you don't have bells right now, you could use beads. You can use pom poms. Yes, it's you really can even cut them out of paper. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gather my mini bells here on my wire, and I'm actually going to do uh, two separate, two separate 
two separate strands of wire. Yes, just because um, they... They crowd too much. Yeah, they crowd too much. So I'm just going to kind of twist it, twist it, twist it. I think this is a really cute, festive little touch for the, the center part there. And I'm going to make one with one. So just slide it on your wire there. And of course, if you don't have the gold, you can use green. You can use twine. You can use... Yes, broken jewelry. I love that. Oh, I like that too. Buttons would be cute. Oh, buttons would be adorable. I love a button. <laughs> a lot of buttons in the White House. <laughs> and those people, they glued on each individual button. So if you you know watch any of the videos or anything and you see these button trees... Somebody was sitting there at a table for like six hours yes. making one little cone tree out of buttons. I'm like, this is insane. Something that was really cool about um, decorating a White House was anyone can apply to decorate the White House. I mean, thousands of people apply, but you can apply, um, I think it's from like August to September usually, and you can help decorate the White House. I mean, it's all volunteer based, but... It's a great way uh -huh. to get festive. Christine said, I did it. Wow, so easy. I love you both. So amazing crafts. And how is your cat? Teddy is doing very well. We had a scare with him the other day. But he's, uh, but he's doing much better. He's sleeping on his little Christmas blanket over here. We can show you. Teddy, say hello. Don't wake him up, please. I know, he's a monster. <laughs> He'll be like, ooh, time for treats. All right, so then I have my little flower of bells here. So how many bells are that? In, That's is five. That I'm so you using did a five. strand of... I did two, two, and then one for good luck. And that's just to give it more dimension. If you did it on one, it would all be almost in a line. So it's like but a bouquet it of bells. A bouquet of bells. And do they jingle? They jingle. I love those J-I-N-G-L-E. Okay, right. so now we're going to kind of attach everything together. Andrew, you're on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here we go. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. So to get the holes in here, we're going to be using a Fiskars hole punch. About and what size were the bowls you used to make the circles? I use a little uh, cereal bowl here. So it's about maybe six inches, five inches. Do you want me to get a ruler? Sure. Let me grab a ruler. Is there a ruler on the silicone mat there or no? Uh, is there? I don't. I don't know where the mat is. Yes. Yeah. 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 So this one is about. We're actually also giving away the silicone mat today. And Tiffany, because it's Christmas and it's a Christmas miracle, said we can have uh, two winners today. So we are actually going to have two winners today. So yeah, this one's about seven inches across, and then my other smaller bowl is. I'm going to say four. Well, five and a half. I'm never good at. But again, it's like you can do super size ones with a giant party bowl or oh, yeah. kind of mini ones. Or I think even it's like, just like kind a of... mug would be. Cute. Oh yeah, a little mug. Okay, now to get these through, we're going to be using the Fiskars punch, which is also going to be in the giveaway. Love this. It's smaller than an actual hole punch, which is really nice. And we found that the easiest way to get into the center was actually folding the um the leaves. <laughs> and I almost said the flower. And then uh, sliding it in and just looking for the center as much as I can. Can you see this? And then I'm going to hole punch it. I'm just be, like um, that. Like cutting, just making another one while okay. I do that. And then we have a nice hole. So I'm going to do that again for this one. Now, if you don't have a hole punch at the moment, you could use a needle. You could use a dull pencil. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I would use probably like a sharp pencil. You know, it's actually, when I'm doing it, it doesn't bother me as much. That's because most things that I do bother you. Well, you know, that's true. And then here we go. And for this other one I'm doing, I'm reversing the color. So I'm going to have the lighter red on the bottom and then the darker red as the centerpiece. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this little bell bouquet and I'm going to put it through the hole of the first one. And then put it through the hole of the second one. I definitely need flower practice and maybe spelling lessons. <laughs> oh, I need spelling lessons, that's for sure. 
Pulled over is clever. Yes, beautiful Christmas, you fun guy. Love the silicone mat. Yeah. Okay, I told Dennis we weren't going to do this set, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to add a little bit of, to, to create a little dimension between the two of them, you could easily just have it like this. It's beautiful, but just to create a little detail, I'm going to add some of the floral tape and I'm going to wrap it around so they're spaced out just ever so um, slightly. Now, if you've worked with floral tape before, you might know that it's pretty annoying. I actually really despise using it, but I did find a good technique for it. Now, floral tape is waxy, and I feel like you have to activate that wax. So I like to take my fingers, almost warm it up, and almost slightly stretch it. That's going to make it um, adhere to itself if that makes sense. Because a lot of time I feel like I'll use a floral tape and it just starts to unravel all automatically, but you really do kind of have to wake it up. So I'm kind of heating it and I can already kind of feel it stick to my fingers just a little bit. So I'm gonna take, I'm actually just gonna take it and I'm gonna start wrapping it around right underneath the first, um, the first uh, leaves, Petal flower <laughs> leaves. <laughs> and actually, you get it. I, I find it easier. Actually, I'm just going to pull that off, and I'll just re put them on. So then I'm going to just start to wrap it around. And again, this is just going to space out our petals just a little bit and give it a little bit of dimension. This is completely optional. You do not need to do this. But, you know, sometimes these little details, if you have the time, if you're not making a bouquet of them or like if you want to, if you're not making a ton of them, this is like a great step just to, you know, add a little pizzazz. Lucy, I see you. I'm going to uh, kind of write it out on this one I'm working on and then show you how where, where how the swoop should be cut. Oh, when you get to the swoop? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, if you're having a little trouble, like if it's not staying, you could always just use a little bit of um, glue. But I, I do find just like pressing it with your fingers, heating it up does help. So now I'm going to add back in our bigger petals. And there you go. Do you see how that just created that little space? Just that little bit of detail really does take this over the top. So then, to attach this, I'm going to use a bigger floral wire. We just got these from Michael's. You can use regular floral wire. These are like floral stems, stem wires. And I'm going to just place this next to, let's see. I almost poked down his eye out with that one. <laughs> you know, I have no feelings whatsoever. <laughs> so I oh wouldn't even gosh. know. <laughs> That's why I wear glasses, because I'll poke my eye out myself. I'm going to take the floor wire again, cut it, manipulate it with my fingers, and I'm going to start to wrap those together. Now, if anyone has any tips about using floral tape, please let me know if you're like, this is a great way to do it, or if you have another way just let me know well i think you're supposed to pull it tight and wrap it around itself and then it's supposed yeah. to but i think but I, I know it's, it it's harder little... to i don't know did i make this up or did i no it's it's a a weird thing to okay so i'm placing it just next to the gold wire now you could wrap it but i find that just doing this is enough And Dennis is right, you do wanna be nice and tight. Now, because the hole is a little big, I do wanna start at the top and go around and around just so the, the larger petals don't fall through. So I'm kinda of gonna go around maybe 10 times and just make sure, yep, that's good. And then I'm gonna to start to travel down. Yeah, I think you're always supposed to stretch it first, someone said. Great. I'm so happy I did that. Now I'm gonna take one of our green leaves, and I'm gonna add it into the mix. Yes, now, and now Andrew is creating one that will go in like our flower pot here, mm -hmm. but if you're doing it just in like a wreath or as a as a present topper, you don't have to do it around this long stem. Absolutely. You can just, you know, kind of do the bells and use that as like the attachment. Yes, do we have this one? I think this one, 
Yeah, this is like that. Did just... just for specifically for a package. You see, we just even added these leaves. I just uh, punched a hole in. And just like that, I mean, this is darling, just like that. That's a great, a great thing to say. And you see, and that one has a blue, a blue. Yeah, leaf. we added like a blue leaf because I don't know. We thought it was super cute. I'm going to trim this down a little bit. It's a little too big. And then I'm going to add my leaf. I want to know your favorite Christmas albums in a comment, please. Ooh. I grew up with the Beach Boys Christmas album, so that one is always very close to my heart. I love Bette Midler's uh, Christmas I album. Love cool Yule, that's Bette Midler's, is so good. Of course, Barbara. Let's see. So going nice and tightly. I grew up with Bing Crosby's Pentatonix. Yes, you know they they have made quite the career on Christmas uh, songs, and they they pop up in every Christmas movie. Oh my god! White Christmas, Pentatonix. Yes, Bing Crosby, Mark Carey, and Bee Gees songs. Oh my god, Barry Manilow. I haven't heard the Mark Carey and Bee Gees songs. Merry Christmas from the family from Robert. Earl Keen. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard that one either. I'm going to look that one up. I also love the Carpenters. Elvis, Bing, Michael Bublé, love it. Yeah, Rascal Flats or Dolly Parton, yes. Do you see I'm just covering up this? I'm going to continue going down. Tori said, RuPaul, hey sis, it's, it's Christmas. Christmas. Linda Edder, yes. Oh my gosh, I love Linda Edder's album. Nat King Cole. I haven't listened to that one in years. You know which one we like too is... um. Cher's new album. Oh, Cher's new album. Number one, The Bare Naked Ladies. Yes. Oh, my gosh. What an eclectic group of uh, crafters we have here today. All right. We're actually going to see Anna Guestire. She has a, a holiday album. Called Sugar and Sugar Booze. Sugar and Booze. That's very really fun. Cool. And we're seeing her live on Friday. We're very excited about that. So I'm continuing to go down, even though you're not going to see this. <laughs> at all but i just think it's really beautiful i mean even just this as a stem is just so gorgeous so now i'm going to <laughs> gene ari i can't see the last name from here was my first christmas album rudolph the red-nosed reindeer Aww. you know and actually uh they're celebrating the 200th year of twas the night uh, nightmare <laughs> twas the, <laughs> twas night, the before night before christmas. christmas and i i read some trivia that rudolph like never really existed until about 1939 mm -hmm. or 38 when they um added him as a reindeer Mannheim steamroller So I can now <laughs> move this crafting. pedal. And if you are moving the pedal, I would really recommend holding where the stem is because this is just kind of uh, glued on. You you know, it'll pop off if not. So I can now- And also you can also it. do uh, like two leaves back to back. I Yes. So you can kind of like, you'll get more security with your little leaf yeah, there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I could have done that. I wanted to show um, the perp so and the swoop. Oh, okay, great. Ready. And now I'm just kind of taking my fingers and I'm manipulating the flower a little bit. Oh my gosh. What about just Christmas so movies? Have y'all been watching? We haven't really been in like a Christmas movie mode. We we started a Christmas story last night. Yes. And that was fun. Elf, yes. That's a classic. We watched something. We watched like the the newer Grinch with ben Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh yeah, that was super cute. That was cute. Um, okay. We watched Krampus. Oh, Christmas yeah. Vacation. That's uh, we're gonna watch that soon. One of our favorites. The series of Santa Claus with Tim Allen. We've been watching that too. Okay, you're gonna show I the swoops. Finished. Yes. Okay. Somebody asked about the swoops, so I wrote them out with a pen here. So after you cut your little sides there, each petal, you just go from the center of the petal and swoop down to the edge there, just to kind of make a little triangle swoop. So it's almost like a little hill. And again, you don't have to be too perfect. You see, does that help a little? So each little cone, you just cut and swoop. And it's, you know, we call it a swoop just because you're giving it a little circular shape. So it looks like a little cradle. Oh, Dash and Lily, we watched that last year. Oh, that was very cute. cute. 
And I think that's all like in New York, right? Which was yeah. really fun. Is that helping? You see, okay, Lucy, you got it. Yeah, so it's just from the center of the cone there and then just down a little bit. You can go down far, down low. Again, you don't have to be perfect. That's one thing we love about this craft. Hallmark movies, yes. We don't we don't get too much into the Hallmark movies. No, not too much. I do I do like them when I watch them though. Yes, they they have a way of kind of I was just going to show real quick. So these do have a tendency of like almost spinning a little bit. So if you want to fix that, you could just take a little bit of craft glue and just dab it here. It doesn't bother me because we usually just have them in place and they're not touched, but you can just add a little bit of craft glue to the ends, just like that. And that's just gonna help hold it in place. Now, when I do want it in place, I want to stagger them so they're not lined up with each other like that. You know, I want the front to be staggered from the back to really make it look full, full, cool. <laughs> full. And then I'm gonna do the same with the glue right on the bottom. I'm gonna I'm gonna get another one for you to put together quickly. Okay, great. Now, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna show you how we did this centerpiece. We literally just used some floral foam. The holiday. And we're putting these in. These are from a long time ago, but they still look so cute. And you just stick them in. And I really feel like you really don't need that many. And how many is that? Like four or five? This is one, two, three, four, five for this little pot. And I just think it's so charming. Yes. Oh my God, Vanessa's here from First Generation House. Hello. Hi, Vanessa. My, yes, my kindred spirit. Um, Come yes, on. these are great because um, we'll use these. So like one year we'll put them in the pot, the next year we'll put them in our garland, the next year we'll put them in our tree. Um, so they always find a different space here in our apartment. Thank you, Linda. All right, did you get the bells ready for this one? No, I didn't do the bells. Here, you you do the fold. I'll get the bells. Here's two bells. Two, two bells. bells. <laughs> um, so Dennis showed the fold. I also like to, we kind of did sort of the sunflowers, take my fingers and put my finger in the middle. That almost rounds it out a little bit. I can tell Dennis was rushing with this one. Oh. Because <laughs> it's a little, a but little messed okay. up, but that's it's okay. okay. Y'all, also, Vanessa was one of the uh, decorators of the White House this year. She has a lot of great content on her channel's first-gen house. Check is her, her out. Yeah, so many good things. So this is really easy. And you can see, you can really change the shape of these uh, leaves as much as you want. And it really does change the look of the plant. Actually, you can actually see these are really spiky which I really love. And these that we made before are not as spiky. They're a little more um, stout, stout, I don't know, rounded. Why'd you look at me when you said that? <laughs> How no rude. comment, no comment. How um, but you can just see it. It looks like a completely different type of poinsettia, which I'm obsessed with. You know what you I'm saying? You say poinsettia or poinsettia? I say poinsettia because I don't know, but I should say poinsettia because that sounds very fancy. It does sound fancy. I was going to say, uh, I saw a few poinsettias a couple of days ago that almost looked splattered. How cute would this be oh, like a if you splattered. took the paper first, splattered on some, or you could even just use paper that has a texture to it and then cut them out. I think that would be beautiful. Amen. Get the kids involved. Because they can they can do that, the splatter. The splatter, part. for sure. And also you can use the Fiskars kid scissors. They work just as well as the adult scissors. Okay. I'm not going to do the space in between this one just because we're almost out of time but if you remember i just added a little bit of tape between them to give them a little bit of space oops let's see i got one wire that doesn't want to go through there we go so how cute is that and again if you're just doing a present topper you could add the leaf and kind of just oh i thought you had another leaf ready That's i do what have I another leaf oh ready. okay because you can just add that on. You don't even need to do the... Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So I can even, yep, just like Dennis said, I can just add this on. I'm even just gonna wrap it. And you know what? I have two leaves. So why not add two, right? Tis the season to be jolly. Okay, and then remember, I'm gonna add my big floral wire projects. right to here. Yes. Yes, Felicia just shared the hashtags. We always like to see your projects and so does Michael's. Again, this video will be live on Michael's YouTube channel in about uh, 24 hours. We usually have a blog post with the tutorial, but we're having some backend issues on our blog. We've had a lot of technical difficulties <laughs> in, yes. in here the next, last couple of days. Okay, so I'm stretching out my floral tape just a little bit, getting it. Christine nice said, my very seen. first time making poinsettias. Wow, so easy. Love you both. Amazing. We oh love you too. Gosh. So sweet. I'm so glad you're crafting with us today. That's so nice. I know. I see a lot of heads down. I'm going to want to see these projects. Yes, people. me too. Okay, so now I'm starting <laughs> at the top. Ugh, just want to line everything up. Drawing the swoops really helped. Okay, Lucy, I'm glad. Oh, that's good. I'm a visual learner too. Oh, Vanessa's doing it with glitter cardstock. <gasps> Always Love showing that. Up. Love paper flowers. More classes on them. Linda, lucky you. You can go back in the archives of Michael's YouTube channel or on our blog, craftylumberjacks.com. Uh, we did, I think, five paper flowers this year, maybe I four. Think three. I think three. Hi, Hyacinthias. Uh -huh. Sunflowers. The sunflowers. And this. And this? Yeah. I feel like there was one more. Was there? I don't know. So I'm really okay, just spending three. some time at the top, really making sure it's nice and secure so this isn't everywhere. And then I'll start to travel on down. I'm really just pressing it and pulling it. So pulling as I'm going and pressing it down with my fingers. And if you don't have any floral tape, you could always use Probably like a washi tape would even work. It's, I always like to have the, yeah, that looks cute. Oh yeah. Okay. Aw, oh, thank you, Felicia. She just shared the paper sunflowers. They're really cute. I can actually show you them. We still have them. Okay, then I'm gonna use my wire cutters. I'm really gonna like press this down with my fingers. And again, you could use a little Thanks glue. Sure. Yeah. These are the paper sunflowers we made. Oh, uh, uh, so yarn pom pom center there. They were so cute. We always have them on hand. Oh, and I just found the bone folder. Oh, a little too Maybe late. we can throw that in the giveaway. I think we could throw that in the giveaway if that's okay. And then I'm just zhuzhing it up a little. Again, if you want to add a little glue to the bottom, you can, but you want to make sure that they are staggered so it looks nice and full. And I mean, that is beautiful. Can I can I have that present, please? Sure, this one? No, the other one. <laughs> there we go. I just want to show it. Even with a stem, I mean, that's so beautiful. If you just had it with a stem like that. So cute. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is stunning. I, I, he's even I he's impressed surprised. myself. <laughs> All right. We can, wow. if you want to show off your projects, we'd love to see them. We can pull up the camera to the front here. Let me see if I can get. Oh my gosh. Lana Banana. <gasps> Amazing. Oh my, oh my God. Linda. Yes. Wait, hold on. I, I can't get this thing open. Okay, let me see it. Yes, love it. Beautiful. Oh my oh, gosh, Christine, my that's God. beautiful. Oh my God, two Christines, Mariana. Linda, I love those colors. Beautiful. They're so bright. Yes. Linda. Oh, we got a pink one here. Oh. iPad. Love it. Beautiful. Oh, Sue Brown. My oh my God, it's Sue Brown. Yes, oh. there she is. Oh my gosh, my second grade teacher changed my life. Vanessa, Absolutely I see lover. you too. Did you make it? Oh, she's on it. She's just starting. <laughs> oh, my well, God. Well, thank you all so much for an incredible year. Yes. Uh, this has been so fun doing these classes with you all. Thank you for our returning crafters. We are going to do a giveaway today. In today's giveaway, we're giving away the Fiskars Hole Punch. We're giving away the wire cutters. I think we got approval for the Fiskars Bone Folder. 
Yes. And the... of course, uh, the silicone mat. And again, we have two winners again this time around. And the coveted sparkly green scissors. Yes. And how gorgeous are these? And the question Okay, so we ask is... you to send us the answers via DMs on Crafty Lumberjacks, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. Or you can email us your answers to be entered into the giveaway at craftylumberjacks at gmail.com. Yes, and just a reminder, you do not have to get it right. You don't have to send in um, a long form question. It really, we just want the engagement and we'll just put everybody in a random uh, picker and then we'll pick two winners. So the question is, where do poinsettias originate from? What country do poinsettias originate from? There's a handful of countries where we saw that they originate from. It's an area. You can yeah, just give one country. Enough. You can give, I don't know. You can just say earth and you would still be put in. I'm yes. going to tell you that right yes. now. Of course. <laughs> Thank you again to Fiskars, to Michaels. We hope you all have an amazing holiday season. I can't believe it's And a happy year. new year. And yes. we hope to see you next year. Bye. Bye.